This is ICML, or the International Conference for Machine Learning. It's basically the Super Bowl of AI, and in 2023, it was held in Waikiki. This year, I, alongside a few other deep grammars, had the incredible opportunity to attend. Why? Because Deep Gram is hiring researchers. And what better place to recruit than the Super Bowl? Here's what happened. Today, I'll be breaking down the talks that we attended and the research that we got to see. Basically, if you didn't get a chance to attend, or if you're just curious about what the Super Bowl of AI looks like, this video will catch you up. The conference contains the latest information and innovations in the AI world. We attended talks about differential privacy, RLHF, data security, and much more. Oh yeah. And we may have attended a couple surfing and boating sessions along the way. But before we begin, note that this video is not meant to be a complete overview of ICML. After all, no single attendee can listen in on all the talks, especially since many of them take place at the same time. Rather, for this video, we just want you to vicariously live through our experience of this incredible conference. Ready? Let's go! On day one, we attended two major tutorials, or talks the first on RLHF, and the second on differential privacy. If you're unfamiliar with RLHF, I highly recommend checking out this resource in the description. But for now, you just need to know two things. First, AI is really just a bunch of computers learning the answers to questions by example. Which of these images contains a cat? An image recognition AI would be exposed to a massive data set of images, some of cats and others not of cats. Then after seeing enough examples, it'll become good at identifying where cats are. The second thing you need to know is that RLHF stands for Reinforcement Learning with Human Feedback. And it basically means that humans help the AI learn when the examples get really tough. This technique of using humans to help AI with the tough problems especially applies to language models like chatbots. After all, how can we be sure that an AI's answer is helpful if we don't have humans to verify that they were indeed helped? Anyway, that's RLHF in a nutshell. And with that in mind, here's the juicy part of the RLHF talk at ICML. At this tutorial, the focus was on data labeling. In our toy example, the labels would be cat or not cat. But what about more multimodal data? You know, data that entails text and images and audio. Multiple modes or types of information. Well, when it comes to multimodal data and RLHF, data labeling becomes not only extremely important, but also extremely difficult. After all, for a given set of images, you might have different tasks that you want the machine to answer. Is it a cat? Versus, where is the cat? versus what color is the cat? And if there are many questions to be answered by the machine based on this data set, we'd better be certain that the labels inside the data set are not only correct, but also unambiguous and peer verified. The talk then emphasizes the importance of having well-planned workflows for data labeling so that we can label data as efficiently and accurately as possible. We have to ask questions in the right way so that we have unambiguous answers. And towards the end of the session, we even tease the idea of automating data labeling using large language models, or LLMs. After all, in theory, if you have an AI model that achieves or even outperforms human accuracy, you should be able to trust it to label data. And in theory, it should be able to predict out-of-class examples as well. But as we've tweeted in the past, using machines to check and balance other machines can be an uncomfortably gray area, at least for now. And speaking of gray areas, let's segue into the next talk, how to DPify ML. DP in this case stands for differential privacy. And differential privacy is the act of coming up with algorithms that minimize the probability of information being leaked without sacrificing the quality of the data itself. Here's the punchline. Right now, training AI requires a lot of data. And as we've seen in the past, it's crucial to be careful with human data. Addresses, birthdays, emails, phone numbers, banking information, and so on. And so, if we're going to expose machines to massive amounts of data, how can we be sure that they won't leak private information? Note that leaks can happen either accidentally or through a malicious user trying to game or hack the AI. Well, this talk proposes three possible solutions to protect people's privacy. Applying differential privacy at the input level, applying differential privacy at the training level, or applying differential privacy at the prediction level. Here's what each of that means. Applying DP at the input level means having a data set that doesn't include any private information in the first place or at least heavily anonymizing this initial data set. Applying DP at the training level means that privacy protection methods are taken while the machine is learning. That is, the data set will totally contain private information, but the machine reads the information in such a way that once it's fully trained, it will have an extremely small probability of leaking anything. This is the most common point at which DP is applied today. And finally, we can apply DP at the prediction level, which means that the machine itself has read a bunch of private information and totally knows all the information inside and out. 
out. However, the people in charge of the machine will impose limits on what the machine can predict and output. In other words, noise is injected during the inference. So the machine will know private information, but the engineers will put safety and DP measures in place such that the machine will hold its tongue, so to speak. Much of the talk revolved around the math behind differential privacy and rigorously defining what it means for an algorithm to satisfy differential privacy requirements. Feel free to check out those details on the ICML website. There was also a talk about AI's role in minimizing disinformation and fake news, but we'll get to that tomorrow. For now, let's take a nap and wake up for day two. Alright, as promised, here's what we discussed during the privacy talk. First, we went over some of the challenges revolving around fake news. I'm sure you could find similar information in numerous places online. The interesting part is when the speakers introduced a fact-checking pipeline. Manual fact-checking focuses primarily on factuality, ignoring harm, as illustrated in this slide. But the measures we use to protect against disinformation need to take into account both factuality and the harm, or at least potential harm, of the information introduced. Right now, there is a human pipeline for fact-checking, and this talk discussed the inefficiencies that those humans encounter. Long story short, we can introduce AI into this human-run fact-checking pipeline to speed up their efforts. So, while humans are indeed still the ones fact-checking and verifying the integrity of journalism in the 24-hour news cycle, AI can help give them a boost in speed. In other words, humans are still running the show, but AI can act as a pair of running shoes that therefore boosts productivity. And if that weren't enough, day two also comes with a lovely poster session where researchers from all around the world present their latest findings. Many didn't want to be filmed during their poster presentation, which is understandable. However, we were able to get in some quick, fun interviews on camera. Here's what that looks like. What's your favorite hyperparameter? Oh yeah, what's your favorite learning rate? What number do you use specifically? And with that, we're moving on to day three. Oh yeah, before we get ready for day three, it's important to note that Deekgram also hosted a boat party with some of the aforementioned researchers. Here's what that looked like. Today, I attended a really cool panel about AI and marginalized languages. The abstract of that panel is basically this. During the past year or so, we've seen rapidly growing interest and excitement in large-scale language models and their applications to various domains beyond traditional problems in natural language processing and machine learning. 
And although it is indeed an exciting development, these language models have been trained on a large corpus that may not be representative of all the languages in the world and may focus disproportionately on better served languages such as English and European languages like French and Spanish. This raises both questions and concerns about the potential for these language models to exacerbate the issue of digital divide as well as inequality and inequity and in information access. As a result, ICML hosted a panel to discuss the issue of marginalized languages. One fun fact that I learned is that sometimes similar languages can actually blend together. For example, Norwegian, Danish, and Swedish are all similar enough that sometimes you can train a Norwegian model using Danish or Swedish data. The extent to which that model will be accurate is a question that we're still trying to solve. Nevertheless, Focusing on marginalized languages, especially those of Asian, African, and Native American descent, continues to be a focus today. Then, later on in the day, we learned that some people really wanted to see DeepGram's robot dog. Long story short, our robot dog went so viral that a couple other fellow conference attendees recognized the logos on our shirts and asked if they could see the dog. We obliged, and soon enough, a crowd gathered around our little puppy. Here's what I told them. DeepGram itself did not build the dog. Rather, we bought the dog from a robotics company in China, and when he was delivered to us, he only had a controller. No intelligence built in whatsoever. And that's where DeepGram comes in. Turns out, if you hook up the dog to a Raspberry Pi and a Bluetooth microphone, you can write a program that uses DeepGram's AI speech recognition software to map certain actions to words. Basically, that microphone would hear the words you say, and it would send that to the Raspberry Pi. Then the DeepGram code inside the Raspberry Pi would transcribe the words that you spoke. That transcription would then be mapped onto a robot command, which the dog would then follow. And the result would look like this. Robodoge, roll over. And so on and so forth. All right, that was day three. Now let's get some rest and get ready for tomorrow. Today, the Test of Time Award is being given out. The Test of Time Award is given to a paper published 10 years ago that still has incredible impact today. In the words of ICML themselves, This year, we have considered all the papers that were presented at ICML 2013, and among those papers have selected three papers that would have been well cited and well followed up by the machine learning community since then. These papers cover diverse aspects of machine learning, including unsupervised representation learning, hyperparameter tuning, model selection, and learning beyond average risk minimization. This year, the paper revolved around learning fair representations. In other words, this paper proposed a learning algorithm for fair classification that achieves both group fairness and individual fairness. You can find the actual paper right here. This paper has been cited numerous times over the past 10 years, and of course, it's easy to synthesize the ideas in this paper with the talks that we had about differential privacy, misinformation, and even RLHF earlier on in the week. And finally, we get ready for the final day. It is around 6.30 in the morning on my final day of ICML week. And today we're headed to my final event, which is the surfing social. After all, when in Rome, or at least Waikiki, for full context, I've only surfed around four or five times in my life. And this is supposed to be a beginner's surfing social. So we'll see how it goes. Two hours later. I just went surfing with like 30 other people from ICML. Pretty cool, met some amazing people. Here's the thing, uh, I was not able to film any of it because obviously I can't bring my phone out or my DSLR into the middle of the ocean. Um, but that being said, there are pictures which I'll show right here. Uh, yeah, it's conference time. And finally, as I was wrapping up my visit to ICML, I stumbled upon a treasure. A treasure that can only reveal itself on the final day. Do you see it? Right there, in the distance. That's right, it's a TikTok booth. And without a doubt in my mind, I knew what I needed to do. Anyway, that was this year's ICML. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, follow DeepGram for more AI content.